Do you want to learn how to mix drum and bass? Then you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Dan from Beatmatch Guru. Let's dive right into the tutorial today. Okay, so today I'm going to take you through some basic steps of how to mix drum and bass. But in order to do that, we're going to look at a few different aspects to the genre itself. So first up is styles. So the different styles that you get in drum and bass are jump up, which is very bass line heavy, sort of wobbly sort of bass lines, can be quite grotty at the same time. Uh, very high energy sort of tracks, which are really good for dance floor fillers, um, if you're DJing in the clubs, for example. The other genre or subgenre is liquid, which is more melodic piano, sort of strings, synths, and that sort of sound with vocals on top as well. So that's a really cool uh, genre. I really like liquid. It's, it's really easy to mix as well. And the other genre is probably one of the most original genres that's probably caused drum and bass to be an influence as to what it is today, and that's jungle, which is pretty much like old chopped up uh, breaks, which are drum loops from like the 60s and 70s uh, with heavy bass lines, that's sub bass lines. That's a really cool genre. And then the other genre is sort of like a dark, sort of grotty sound. Um, very sort of, can be tech, techno, techno sort of sounds as well. So there's a crossover between a dark side, sort of drum and bass. So the people that sort of make that are the producers called Noisier, uh, Mephius, people like that. So you can Google those guys and you'll get a flavor for what that sound is, very dark and grotty. So. Next up, I want to talk to you a bit about record labels. So the record labels that are most commonly featured, especially prominent in my experience of drum and bass as well, is Hospital Records. They do a mixture. They also have like a, a secondary label, which is called Med School. I'm not sure uh, Med School is going around anymore, but the they Hospital do a lot of liquid sounds, um, not so much jump up or, or dark sort of drum and bass. But then there's also Ram Records, which do that sort of jump up and dark uh, drum and bass, that grotty sort of bass lines, heavy hitting. And then the others are Shogun, Shogun Audio. Uh, those guys do sort of a mixture. They do some heavy, heavy hitting sort of dark sounding drum and bass, but then also they do have some liquidy sort of deep sort of drum and bass. So that, that's a really cool, um, really cool record label to go with if you want to get a mixture. Well, the last one is Inner Grounds. They have a big influence on my drum and bass DJing, so they're, they mostly liquid drum and bass. Um, but yeah, check those, check those out, check the websites out and go and see what you think. Also, you could go on Beatport uh, and you can search by label or get a flavor for those. And on Beatport as well, also there's subgenres that you can find. Um, and find different labels because there's tons of labels in drum and bass so you could find there so get get searching the next step is beat structures so now i'm going to jump in onto the computer and i'm going to show you and explain that's a few diagrams what the different beat structures look like the main reason why i'm talking to you about this is because house music is pretty uh pretty simplistic the beat structures don't really change too much for example, in house. House music is just kick, 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 kick. Whereas drum and bass, yeah, there's different variations because there's only usually two kicks uh, and two snares in a four beat bar, for example, but those might vary. And that's what we're going to have a look at now. Let's get stuck in. Beat structure. So what you can see here, guys, is the standard drum and bass beat. So effectively, what it's built up of is four beats in a bar as that's how i use use it visually here in my blog post is the the first the first beat is the kick the second is the snare the third is non-existent it's just a symbol and then the kick is in between beat three and four which is the off beat and then the fourth beat is the snare so it would sound like this so this is the most common sound or, of, or the beat structure or the sound of the drums that you'd hear in drum and bass. And I'd massively advise trying to pick drum and bass tracks that, that have this sort of structure 
at the beginning. If you're a complete beginner, this, this is a good way to learn. Usually what you'll do is when you're queuing up the track, when you're, you're either pressing the queue button or you're using the jog wheel, for example, then you can queue up using the, the first beat of the kick. So number one, you'll be using that to queue into the track. Okay, so the next drum and bass beat is, is what I call the jungle beat or the offbeat snare. What this means is, is that the first kick is there and the second is the snare and then you'll have no second from uh, the first beat. So you have kick, snare and then snare on the, the offbeat, which is, is quite a nice sound. It's, it's got a really good rhythm and that sounds like this. You can hear that that is actually pretty. It's got a pretty good flow to it, and that that's quite a, a jungly sort of potentially like liquid sound as well. The next beat is the four times four beat. So I think probably the most recognisable track by Sub Focus, Time Warp. It uses the four four to the floor sort of beat. Uh, so the the kick snare kick snare on on each of the beats. So you can see that's pretty simplistic in beat structure it's actually not that common to be honest with you but the the first beat that i showed you is the one that i mentioned to stick with that makes the most sense so here's that sound now so you can see how that sounds like like sort of like a house house track just sped up the next beat is half time beat so what you can see here is just as an example We've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So effectively an eight beat bar here. So what that means is, is that every snare is slightly, is slightly slower. So instead of the snare being on the two or the four, the snare is on the three uh, and also on the three on the second uh, bar as well of the one, two, three, four on the second bar. What this sounds like is like a sort of like a hip hop beat which in actual fact, you can mix hip hop with drum and bass because the hip hop beat is pretty much half of a drum and bass track. So that's pretty helpful if you, you want to experiment. So that's beat structures. I hope you, that, that was helpful. That should give you a flavor of what, what to look out for uh, and here. Let's move on to song structure and cue points. So here we have a breakdown of a song in drum and bass. This track is called, is called Conversations featuring Kevin King by Matt. So what we can see here is I've seg segmented each of the sections up until like the second drop. So the second drop being the last beat where you can see that last breakdown section. So how I visualize drum and bass sections in my head when I'm mixing is by 64 beats in chunks represented by each of those yellow lines. But really what what you can see in total is the sum of its parts. When you look at the intro, you can see that's built up of three sections of 64 beats. The breakdown is 64 beats. And then the chorus is 128, so there's two times the 64 beats, the same again for the verse, but then only 64 beats for the breakdown. So you can see how this, this the structure is actually uh, built for a drum and bass track. Not all drum and bass tracks are the same as this, but this is a very, very typical way in which uh, drum and bass uh, tracks are formed. Usually what happens is, as you can see represented by that green line there, the the ouch or the after the breakdown, there's a pretty similar structure. So you followed by the, the chorus verse and then maybe an outro. So similar beat structure to the intro. So that's, this is how uh, drum and bass tracks are structured. Now I'm going to talk to you about the cue points and how we can go about mixing and navigating through the tracks in Rekordbox. So here, here we have two tracks loaded, one here and one here. So what I want to show with you today is these markers here I've set, uh, different color coded markers. So the reason why I've set these markers, which are actually called hot cues, these allow me to get prepared when I'm mixing and it helps to put specific markers on the different sections as we saw in the previous slide. So the, the green ones represent drops. So the drop is when the, the bass line kicks in after the build up. These orange ones are like verse, the chorus as you've seen before in the, the beat structure. So it just they're more signifiers of 
where I am in the track. When say if this track is playing, then that's where I know where I am. The blue ones are the breakdowns. So the breakdowns are generally like where the track is going to build up and then go back into the drop. So I've replicated that on the other track as well. The, the other tip that I would say to do is to use memory cues and you can set these to help cue up your tracks. So as I was saying before, most tracks are quite similar in structure but generally are built up of 64 beats or 128 beats if you like to call it that. But what you can see here is that I've set these cue points 64 beats apart and I've done it the same on the other track on the left hand side here. So that allows me to get, get queued up correctly with the, the correct distance between where I want to start mixing in or fading in. So let's say for example the track on the left is playing and we've got to this last marker. So I know roughly from here to here is about 124 at 128 beats and then from here we've got 64 and 64 so that's 128 so ideally I'd want to start from here so that's where I'd queue it up if this track was playing and that's where I'd start to queue it up so you can see how it's just literally finding the, the blocks and sort of the chunks of the 64 beats and then trying to match it with the memory cues that you've set in the, the cue point. Okay, so looking at how we can mix drum and bass is, there's three different areas that I'd like to sort of bring to the table as just sort of an, an intro. So what you can do is use these EQ buttons here. So the first one is I like to use the, the low cut and also turn down these slightly but you, mainly it's using this low cut. And the reason for that is, is to cut, cut out any sort of bass line or, or, kick, or bass low end frequencies from the kick itself. So say if we've got a track playing on this side and the crossfader's over here, what, what you want to do is, is switch this down to minus, uh, maximum of, of the minus on the, on the low. And then from there, just simply bring in the crossfader. And then once you've got to a certain section of, of the this track on the second channel, you can then use this low fader to then counteract and then you can smooth it, smoothly bring it in and then bring that fader over to the other side. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, so the obvious, uh, the, the opposite side of this is using the, the higher end frequency. So again, we're playing this track on, on channel one, for example, crossfader is playing this channel. And then what you can do is, is use the mid and the highs. And potentially you could use all of them as well, if you'd like. So in this instance, we're over this side, so we're bringing it in. And then what you can do is, so we're playing both tracks, they're both in time. And then what you can do is, is fade in, the mid and the high, slowly, slowly, slowly. And then what that will do is, is you'll bring out the higher, mid to higher end frequencies. So that could be things like the cymbals, the, the vocals, the, the lead. So like maybe a piano or a synth. And then what you can do from there is then bring in the lows like we did before. So then you counteract them. And then you've got, you can fade out the mid and whilst you're doing the, the high, you can then move over to the other side. So this sort of like uses the crossfader in conjunction with the EQs. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is pretty simple. Say you're on uh, channel one and you're, you're coming very close to the drop as we shown uh, on the, the record box previously where I showed the, the green A a little marker for the hot cue and you can use that as a, a signifier or like a marker so when you know it's coming in you could potentially use this and within four beats you could just slam it over to the next side for example or you don't even have to use the eq you can just literally just drop it in and then that that'll be that 
and you know you've gone from one heavy bass line usually if it's building up a lot of drum and bass has like a build up before with like a reverse uh, sort of cymbal sound or a build up of of the drums like really like consistently building up kick drums and then you can just drop that in or like slowly build drop it in over the maybe four beats so guys i hope you enjoyed that drum and bass tutorial and how to mix drum and bass it was a bit of an intro as well to give you a bit of background into drum and bass as well but yeah i hope you liked it and then you can start getting stuck in and start mixing if you're a complete beginner as well search for beatmatch guru and you'll find lots of dj tips all different uh, helpful tips and tricks for djing click the like button hit subscribe and we'll see you next time